In this lesson, we'll learn how to work with cat muscle objects. I really enjoy using cat muscle because it's a great way to keep volume in our characters. So by the end of this lesson, what we'll do is use a muscle object to deform the creature's neck. And then in our last lesson, we'll learn how to add a, a jiggle effect to that. That's going to be another really neat topic. But let's go ahead and get right in. Went right over to our create panel. And let's go ahead and create a cat muscle object. Now, when we create this, you'll see that it's, a, it's just a, a plane with points connected to it that we could use to deform the, the surface. So how can we use this type of object? Well, this would be great to tie to areas that are prone to collapse on our mesh. I would use this for the pectorals. I think we'd get some really nice deformations. Now I'd also like to point out to you that as we start to move this, you can see how the surface is segmented. So if you didn't want it segmented, if you wanted it to be just one piece, you could always head over to your modify panel and switch the type here to mesh. And now as we start to pull this, you can see that it's just one surface we're dealing with. We might need to increase the resolution if this is going to work out well for us. So what I'd first do is go to wireframe mode with F4, just to keep track of the topology here. Then I'd go to the U and V segment channels and increase these. Let's go ahead and work with 7. Now you can see that as we start to pull our helpers, we're getting a much smoother result. Very cool. Now I'd also like to point out that when moving this object, you might find that when you go ahead and start to move from the object itself, that that works out well. However, you'll find that it doesn't quite work once we stop moving it. So, ideally what you'd want to do is grab the entire object and then move it that way. You can see right now, I have the pivot center option selected. And this is what we'd want to use to reorient this and move it in place. When creating this object initially, I may go to the view that matters most. So if it were the uh, pectorals that we were using to uh, rig and, and integrate into our, our skin, we'd head over to our front view and create the muscle here. It might be easier to set it up that way. And then again, when using mesh mode, we'd want to make sure that we'd use the skin modifier to see those, those changes. Those, or not the skin modifier, but the skin wrap modifier, that is. The skin modifier, it only looks at the bone object's transform matrix. So it's not going to look at the size of that bone at all to determine if uh, that will thus show up in our, our skin. So that's something to keep in mind. And that's why creating a jiggle is going to be a little bit trickier when we set up our muscle object. Because we can't just add the jiggle directly to the muscle. It needs to be done a different way. All right, so we have one more muscle object to take a look at, and that's what we'll use to tie into our rig. Let's go back to our create panel and use a muscle strand. So we'll click four times, and that will create anchor points for us and if we were to take a look in wireframe mode hitting F3 you could see that we also have these extra helpers here to add more curvature and these are linked to our anchors alright great so let's go ahead and put this to practical use now with the muscle selected I'll go ahead and just delete it and then move over to our left view and now we could go in zoom in and start to create our muscle object. I'm going to go ahead and have this set to bone simply because that's what we will add our muscle objects with using this uh, bone option as our type. So now we can go ahead and start from the base of the neck until we work our way up to the creature's head. And then at that point we could go ahead and start to fit this better in the, the creature's neck. Shouldn't take too long to do that. And now we need to make sure that these these objects will be connected. We could do that 
by using our link tool. So I'll now go ahead and grab link. Go ahead and link this to the creature's head bone. And we can link the base point here to our chest hub. It might be easiest to do that from the perspective view. So let's go ahead and move there. And I'll go ahead and drag this, this out over to the chest. To test to make sure that it has been linked to the right object, with it selected, you could always use the page up hotkey. I'm going to go to the helper here, closer to the head, and just make sure that it's been connected properly. All right, so now watch this. When we start to rotate, you'll notice that our muscle object starts to behave in a, a nice way, but we're not quite getting squash and stretch. In order to do that, with the muscle selected, you can head over back to modify, and we actually have a squash and stretch property here that we'd need to enable. If we were to now select our head control, notice we're getting some nice behavior. You can see how the muscle tapers as we stretch and expands as we squash. So that will ultimately lead to some really nice results in our skin. Okay, let's now go ahead and add this to our skin modifier. So with the creature selected, we could go to our add tool and find our muscle objects. Here they are. We don't want to forget about this first strand. So that's strand one all the way to eight. I'll now go ahead and choose select. All right, so instantly they're added to our skin. So at this point, what we could do is start to paint weight to them. And first, we'd want to add some animation. So I've made sure we have an animation layer already added. So now, making sure we're in animation mode, I'll enable auto key. We could go to frame 20 and lift the head up. And then we'd also want to rotate it back so we can get some nice volume in the neck when the neck squashes. All right, so to fix this up now, it's actually quite simple. You should already be familiar with the weight painting tool. But selecting our surface, going to our modify panel, let's go ahead and enter edit envelope mode. And now we could select the muscle we'd like to paint to and start to fix this up. We can go in and grab our paintbrush. We could also take a look at our options. I might set this to a low size of maybe two to start out and a low strength of about 0 0.05. We could always increase that if we need to. Let's go ahead and grab our paintbrush and get right to work cleaning up our deformations. All right, great. So when we do this step, it's just a matter of keeping track of our topology, making sure things flow smoothly. Let's go ahead and take a look at how things look when the neck squashes. All right, very neat. We don't have much work to do here at all. Great, there are a few areas here that are pulling quite a bit that we may want to start to, to tweak. Let's do the same thing on the opposite side. In no time at all, we get some very nice looking results. So we start to scrub again to add some, some squash. You can see that that looks very nice. All right, so since we are familiar with the weight painting process, I'll go ahead and stop the lesson here. And in the next lesson, we will learn how to create a really nice realistic looking muscle jiggle.